Dawn, the stage is all yours. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm really happy to be here and speak with you all about uh, some about what I do at KCC as a counselor. And um, like Sheldon mentioned, I am a counselor in the Mida Camber Center. And I'll talk a little bit more about that um, in the second half, but I'm going to share my screen and here we go. Okay. Okay. So here's my contact information. I'll put this up again at the end, but again, my name is Don Chandler. Um, I'm a counselor at Mida Camber Center. And um, again, thank you so much for being here. I wanna just show my gratitude for all the work that you do with your students. You're such an integral piece to their path and to success with their next huge decisions in their life. So thank you all so much. Um, so deciding a community college, um, I'm, I'm sure you got a lot of this um, sort of spoken about with Alfie and Sheldon, but um, I want to talk about um, the fact that a lot of the students are not aware of all the big benefits that they can take advantage of while they're at community college. Um, choosing to go to community college is a really wise decision, I feel, for several reasons. And these are discussions that I have with a lot of first year students. And it's, it's a big part of my counseling and advising with them. So I thought it would be helpful. Um, even though you would probably be aware of some of these, it's good to have as a reminder. And again, knowing that I talk about this a lot with students, having this in your back pocket, um, if the need comes up, might be helpful. So um, one of the biggest reasons it's a good decision to go to KCC is the tuition cost. And that's the most obvious piece. Um, so this is um, sort of give or take, but the biggest point is you can see the big difference between the private universities, the um, UH system and KCC. So of course, um, the dramatic and pretty unfair rise in cost of tuition means that students' time is really important. So once they're at the university, they, if money is an issue, they can't really afford to just explore different majors and subjects without some financial ramifications. They'll need to be really efficient to get their degree completed as quickly as possible. And um, students have this burden of needing to be as strategic as possible to maximize their tuition dollars and leave university with as minimal debt as they can. So um, unless there's a program that a student wants to pursue and they can't get that at KCC, starting off at KCC is just very wise because it'll really dramatically reduce the amount of debt that they'll leave after graduation. And even KCC's tuition um, is more than what I paid for at university. But still, um, anything to reduce the cost will be a big help. So the, the next piece is I like to let them know that this is a really good time for exploration. So I work with a lot of undecided students and they really feel pressure of time, but it is a good time for them to explore. And even students who start college with a declared major, a lot of times they'll change their minds. And then sometimes that can cost them time and money because they have to start taking prerequisites a little bit later than they might have if they had known this change a little bit sooner. So, and students who start college with a declared major, um, a lot of times they'll take general ed courses and that can be taken at a community college to again, really reduced, reduce their costs. And, while they're at KCC and really any other CC, it provides them excellent support um, as they explore and pursue their goals. We have amazing counselors that provide career advising, 
and assessments, academic advising, and any resources they might need in order to optimize their success. So financial aid or ADA accommodations and et cetera. So also the biggest thing that I like to emphasize with students that um, sometimes they might not realize and it comes with kind of the stigma, but they receive a quality education. So universities consider KCC courses equivalent because they have the same level of quality. Uh, teachers who teach at UH Manoa also teach at KCC and, and other universities in the UH system teach throughout the community colleges. And students who could benefit from going to a CC but choose not to just because of the stigma might be losing an opportunity to earn good education at, um, again, a fraction of the cost. And transferring, which is really um, what a lot of what I'm gonna go into further, transferring can provide more options to students. So if a student can demonstrate that they've been successful at completing lower division requirements, they're more likely to be accepted to the university of their choice if they weren't able to in high school, out of high school. And universities love transfer students because they've already showed that they can follow through on their commitments and goals. And that means higher graduation rates for the university and higher retention rates, which universities really like. So, um, so going back to MKC, Mida Camber Center, um, this is a resource for students to speak with one of the six counselors there, including myself, who specialize in, specifically in associate degrees in arts and sciences, as well as transferring and career, career advising. And um, I just wanna note that nursing and health sciences are separate offices. And there are a lot of students who are interested in nursing and health sciences. So I'll still meet with them because they might be debating between a couple of options, including nursing or health science. But those are separate offices because those programs are so big. And I think there'll be an opportunity to learn more about those later. So. With the arts and sciences programs, um, those include liberal arts and natural science programs. So within liberal arts, there are concentrations such as art, business, econ, English, human development and family studies, history, Pacific Island studies, Hawaiian studies, psychology, elementary or secondary education. And with natural sciences, there are concentrations such as biology, physical science, information computer technology, and engineering. So there's two pieces with transferring. There's transferring in the UH system, and there's transferring outside of the UH system. So most students at KCC have the goal of transferring to University of Hawaii at Manoa, and a lot of the programs that we offer are bridge programs. So for example, um, the psychology major at University of Hawaii at Manoa has admission requirements for that major, which are also in the concentration requirements of the AA in liberal arts with a concentration in psychology at KCC. So if a student earns an AA in liberal arts with a concentration in psychology, they should be automatically be able to be accepted into the UH Manoa psychology major. And the same goes for several other majors like, like business. And for students who are, um, actually I wanna go back and provide um, a, little, a resource. And has anyone used the UH Manoa program sheets? If, if you have, can I see thumbs up? It's this website here. This is a list of all of the undergraduate programs at UH uh, Hawaii at Manoa. And it also has their program sheets, which is a really valuable piece that I use a lot with students who are transferring. And um, I'm putting, uh, Sheldon put the, the link to that in the chat. Thanks so much, Sheldon. And um, so, Staying on the theme of psychology, I'm just gonna pull up the psychology program sheet really quickly. 
And once you select the program sheet, it's this here that you want to select, it will download a Word document. And this is what it looks like essentially. So on the left, we have general education requirements, which typically overlap with the courses that they're taking at KCC, and as well as some of the focus requirements. And then down here are admission requirements. So these classes, like I mentioned earlier, these classes are built within the psychology concentration in the liberal arts psychology program. And so this is a really helpful tool to use in addition to keeping track of what they're taking in their associate's degree so that they can overlap the classes, make sure that they're not only completing requirements for associates, but they're also on track to completing admission requirements for this program. And it's also nice to have this list up for students. They can really shop around and see um, which program fits with them. So that's available there. And then transferring outside of the UH system. So transferring outside of the UH system, usually um, I advise them to speak with the university that they're interested in transferring to. A lot of times students will come to me and expect that I know all of the programs of every school in across the board. And so I, I have to let them know that you actually do need to get in touch with that university and see what their requirements are. And once they get that information, then they can come back to me and we can come up with a plan together and I can help them put together their schedule through the completion of their time at KCC. But um, it, it is up to them to really make sure that they get that information. And I also let them know that their counselors can also see what they're taking at KCC and let them know um, if those credits will transfer. And a lot of times though, students might not know which school they wanna to transfer to. Um, and there's actually a lot of conversations I have with students who they don't know where they want to go. They know they just want to get off the island and go somewhere on the mainland. So when that comes up, I like to use Peterson's college search tool. And I can add that in the chat as well. So that's here. And this is a great tool that can really help narrow down um, some criteria that students are interested in. So let's say, again, a student is interested in psychology. So they would type that in here. And this will tell us all of the colleges that have psychology programs. Now, psychology is a very popular major. So I think we're limited to a thousand at a time. So over here on the left, they can really narrow down what other criteria they would like from their school. They can choose which state they want to go to. So let's say California. And now we've narrowed it down to about 200. And then we can also go through and select the tuition or GPA or admissions difficulty. And this has been a really big help for students. They can get go directly to this, the school's website to get more information. They can create a profile and save schools as they're researching which school to transfer to. So, um, so career advising is a big part of what we do at MKC. And it's my favorite discussion that I like to have with students. This is really what I love about being a counselor, um, especially at the community college level. So once, uh, we use a lot of assessments. So if a student comes to me and is lost, they have no idea what they want to do. They know they want to go to college. They are kind of, they don't even know what interests that they have. They're not sure what their, how their interests can translate into an occupation. So we have these assessments through a tool called Focus 2, and it evaluates 
work, personality, skills, values, and leisure and activities to see which occupations best match with those results. And once they complete the assessment, they come back to me and then we go over the assessment. So we look for themes and if anything surprised them, if they agreed or disagreed with any of the findings and then go from there. So once they have some of these findings, they'll, they'll get a list of occupations that are suggestions saying that based on what you have indicated, your, your results match with folks who are in these occupations. So I like to use Hawaii Career Explorer, and I'll also put this in the chat just in case you'd like to use this. And Hawaii Career Explorer is a tool where you can input an occupation and let's say marriage and family therapist, again, going in the psychology theme, but when you input that occupation, it will give us a lot of information about both Hawaii and nationally what this occupation is about. So here, this graph tells us the projected number of jobs that may be available in the next five or so years. And this tells us this blue line is the Hawaii state number of jobs, and then orange is national. And for marriage and family therapy, it looks like it's pretty promising. So it might be a good idea if a student wants to pursue that. And then here we have salary range, and this is based in Hawaii, um, number of jobs and number of unique postings. And this is new, but they also indicate the risk of automation because of the explosion of technology. A lot of positions we come to find can be automated. And so it's good to know if this might be automated in the future, but of course this one has a low risk of automation. Then we can see that there are some related job titles if a student is interested in seeing if there's anything related that they might be interested in as well as the jobs of these related job titles and what companies are hiring them. And then here is really helpful too. So because we're at the stage, it's really early stage of deciding what direction a student would like to go to. It's important to know if their career goal requires any additional education. So with this goal, we know that they're gonna have to pursue a master's degree so if they know that early on, it's, it's best so that if they decide, you know what, I have no interest in earning any graduate degree, I just want a bachelor degree, then they'll know that ahead of time and then they can adjust from there. And then this last area is just some top skills that are indicated within those jobs that are, are called for. So knowing that psychology, mental health, social work, et cetera, are important for that occupation. That's something that can be focused on. Okay, so another, sorry, here we go. Um, so another resource that I like to use with students um, is called, what can I do with this major? So a lot of students might feel obligated to pursue a specific major based on assumptions or maybe some external pressures. And if a student expresses interest in a subject but doesn't quite know what careers are available, I like to use, what can I do with this major? And again, I'll put this link in the chat and I'll walk you through what this looks like. So here, it's um, a list of a lot of common majors, and within it, it tells us what occupations are possible in that area. So again, we'll take a look at psychology because this is actually a big major that I show students because a lot of students are interested in psychology, but they'll say, well, 
if I don't want to go to graduate school, I don't think I can do anything with it. But this actually shows us what they can do with um, the psychology major at a bachelor level. So left uh, on this left column are occupations and then they're grouped by different themes. So these are areas of occupations. The center column are employers who would employ these occupations. And then the right are strategies that might be needed in addition to earning this degree. So some of these will say you do need a graduate degree or a doctorate degree in order to pursue one of these. But if you keep going, you can also come up and uh, come across occupations that don't require that. And um, the most common conversation I have when students are debating with psychology is they'll say, I, I really like it. I love the classes. It's so interesting. But you know, I think I should just take business because business is more secure and I, it's, it's just the most basic, easy fallback. And I'll ask them what interests them about business. Are you interested in um, accounting? Are you interested in finance or are you interested in economics? And if they say no, I don't have any interest in any of those things. I let them know that you can apply a lot of different majors, particularly you can apply psychology to a business setting. Definitely human resources is an area that psychology is very valuable. So also different areas of business like sales, customer service, and different types of management and so on. So that's something that um, it's another good tool for students to use to really shop around if they're just not really sure and they just want to see what possibilities are out there. And that's that's all I have actually. Um, thank you again for taking the time to connect. Um, I just wanted to quickly go through some of the tools that I use and some of the conversations that I have with students so that it might be helpful to you if this ends up coming up. But um, yeah, again, you're all very valuable pieces to your students' decision-making process and I appreciate all you do. And um, there's a few extra minutes if you have questions for me, but thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you so much, Dawn. I think one of the questions I think maybe not comes up but in your opinion or from what you've seen sorry mm -hmm. how often do students change their major so when i see them it comes up pretty often but i'm not quite sure what the ratio is of students who change their major versus students who don't because a lot of times they'll change their major on their own without meeting with an advisor, but it does come up um, maybe more frequently than we might expect. And um, it is best, of course, for them to talk to a counselor as they do that. But yeah, it does come up. It's, it's not uncommon. So if they come in on day one as a freshman, do you see students who came in with an idea of what they wanted to do, then they took a few classes, then they would say, you know what? I changed my mind. I want to try something else. Does that come up quite a bit? Yeah, definitely. It comes up a lot, especially in that first one or two semesters is probably the time that it comes up the most because they're getting exposed to these subjects for the first time. And a lot of times they'll go into it with some assumptions about certain subjects. And that's definitely the time where they, yeah, because they're exploring and all of this exposure, they're definitely changing their minds more in that stage. So I actually might be preaching to the choir here, but what would you tell a student who seems so fixated on one degree? So these are high school seniors and they're so fixated on one degree. Um, what, do, what would you tell them about what the college journey is like? Yeah, I would tell them to try to get exposure to what that career is. The first thing that comes to mind is nursing. Mm. Uh, I think that a lot of students come in pretty fixated on nursing um, because it's one of those careers that you 
hear about when you're little. And it's, it's also something that you hear about as an adult as something that's very, you can be very successful. Uh, there's a lot of security. You can take it anywhere and it's, it's well-respected. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, but with something like that, it's, it's so competitive in Hawaii that I like to let them know, make sure, of course, meet with a counselor, even if you feel like you're 100% sure, but you want to have multiple fallbacks, multiple options, just so that just in case it doesn't work out, or if it, in case you change your mind, because it could either be that there's, there's, they get flooded with applications and it just doesn't end up working out. Or a lot of times students find that they just don't want to continue pursuing that for whatever reason. So it's good to have multiple interests lined up just in case. Any, I guess, any advice you would give a senior now? I mean, these are, again, high school counselors in the room. Some are community partners as well with nonprofits. Um, what kind of advice would you give students who are entering college, who some might be their first in their family to go? What kind of advice would you give them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I am a first generation college student as well. That's um, definitely lean really hard on your counselors. Um, it can feel a little isolating when you're not quite sure um, about what you're doing. Definitely when you get to college, contact a counselor, make an appointment right away. Be very transparent about what your concerns are, your fears and any interests that you might have. If, even if you are pretty fixated on one, it's good to continue exploring what else you might be interested in. Focus on general education courses because that's a really excellent way to get exposure to different subjects while still completing requirements that most majors require. So um, I think those will be the main things is, is to focus on general education and lean on your counselor a lot. Those are really great tips. Um, any questions from the gallery? Anyone in the room that have questions for Dawn? So as you can see, um, many counselors on our campus, tons of support. I think no matter where students are on, on their journey, there's just so many resources available to them. Uh, they just have to reach out and ask questions, uh, reach out to the resources that are available. So um, any questions? All right, Don, thank you so, so much for being with all of us uh, this morning. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, Thanks for having me.